Do you know what the crowd is about today? Yeah, we had a bomb threat. Oh, at the building? Yeah, inside all three of them. So oh, they had, wow. everybody had to come out the building, and now they're probably getting ready to let us back in. Okay. I ain't seen no news people. I ain't seen no news people either. <laughs> Anybody has ears to hear? The Lord Jesus Christ said, Do not fear man that can only harm the body. Fear the one that can harm the body. And then cast the soul into hell. So I encourage you, fear God, obey His commandments, do everything that He has said, everything, follow through on what He has given us to do, is to love God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, all of your strength, to give thanks to Him because He's good. He gives us good things every season. He gives us rain, He gives us food, He gives us life, the breath in our lungs, the blood that we have, everything belongs to God and will go back to Him. That's why he even provided the Lord Jesus Christ. We had all sinned. We all fell short of his glory. We all did what was evil in his sight. And that's why God sent the Son of God into the world to be a sacrifice for sin so that we would turn away from what is evil, what is lawless, selfish, and to turn towards God to do what is good and righteous. And he is ready to save, but sin separates us from God. If you're in your sin, if you're still doing what's evil, if you have not recognized that He is the truth, He sees everything. Everything is open and bare to Him. So I encourage you, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't wait. Don't delay. Because that day is going to come like a thief. He's already declared a judgment against all that is evil, all that is unrighteous. All the prophets testified before this that there is a day He's coming to devour, to destroy the sinners, destroy those who are rebellious, destroy those who are evil, destroy those who are doing wicked things, that are telling lies, disobedient to their parents, fierce covenant breakers, tr they break truces, they're gossiping, they're slandering, they're doing all the things that are wicked. And they know, they know God's righteous judgment that the people who do these things are worthy of death. And yet they persist in them and approve other people doing them too. Which is why God's love is discipline. God's love does not want to leave you in your sin. He does not want to leave you doing evil things. He wants to bring you and prepare you into the kingdom of God where there's everlasting life, where everybody will be in peace, true peace, where there's no evil. But that's a process that we have to go through. That's what sanctification is, is to be washed, to be clean. That's why, look at what Jesus did. He gave his blood. He said, deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me daily, daily. You have to deny yourself daily. If you follow your heart, you will die. I guarantee it. The heart is deceitfully wicked. You are going to choose yourself over what is righteous and good every time, which is why God says, deny yourself. Seek the kingdom of God. It is near. It is near. Those who have repented, turned away from sin, they will enter the gates with singing and glory. Amen. Hey, the time grows short. The God, we're all going to have to stand before God and give an account for everything that we've said, everything that we've done. Flesh and blood. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's why we have to do the truth. We have to speak truth. We have to be holy. That's the commandment from God. Be holy as I am holy. Be perfect as I am perfect. We don't get that. about to get us out of this court. Ain't that right? Well, be righteous. Justice means if you did wrong, then you know you should be punished for it. That's justice. That's what the thief on the cross was doing. He said, I know I should be up here. That man's innocent. Jesus was innocent. We've all sinned, but the King of Kings, he was blameless. God gave him as a sacrifice for all. And it's a testimony that in truth, that anybody that loves truth will come to Jesus Christ. He's the King of all kings. He's the one that is worthy. He laid his life down for all. He gave his life up for everybody. Amen.
If you have ears to hear, know that everything that happened in older times, this is Solomon, the wisest person that ever lived. He said, everything that was will be again, that there's nothing new under the sun. That the, again, people will constantly rebel, constantly go away from what is lawful, what is good, what is just, what is noble, which is why God calls people to repent. He'll send people to go and they'll be the shame, the despised, people that don't think anything of you. That's why he sends them into the world to call people to repentance, which just means change your mind. Acknowledge that you've done evil. Acknowledge the things that you are doing are not truthful. They're not right. If you're loving fantasy, if you're loving lies, if you're loving being bitter towards other people, then loving your neighbor as yourself, the gospel is mercy triumphs over judgment. If God were to give us justice, he would rightfully be able to execute all. But he sent the Lord Jesus Christ into the world to show to reconcile us back to him. If he gave his life for us, we should therefore live for him. We should do his will. That's what the gospel is, to obey God, to give him the glory. Look at what he's done. He raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The rulers of that generation condemned him to death. He had done nothing wrong. No evil was found in his mouth. They're beating him. They're torturing him. They're mocking him. And he's still pouring out mercy. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So I encourage you, obey God. Do what is right. Turn away from all evil. Turn away from the lies. The Spirit of God says, don't call controversy what the people are calling controversy. There is one controversy. You are either with God, gathering with Him in love, in righteousness, and in mercy to the truth, or you are scattering people and you are against God. Which is why the gospel also says, the Bible also says, friendship with the world is enmity with God. He's going to come, he will burn all of this away, and he will establish his kingdom, which is why he's looking for people that love him, love the truth, understand why he came, to save us from our sins. So I encourage you, all you have to do is believe and then work out that salvation with fear and trembling. The fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. That's why the people that hate you are going to speak words of love and that's all they're going to leave it to. They're not going to tell you about the wrath of God. They're not going to tell you about fear. They're not going to tell you that you, if your eye caused you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand caused you to sin, chop it off. God's righteous judgment is going to fall on all who disobey the gospel, all who do not believe, all who do not do what is true and right and good. So I encourage you, that day is coming quick like a thief. It says they are going to be saying peace and safety. Peace and safety because they're going to reject the truth. They're going to push it out of the churches. They'll push it out of everything. They will reject what is noble, what is good, what is pure, what is holy. And they will believe lies. They will love it. And that's why they will build themselves strong in this, which is why if you are a sheep and you're hearing God's voice today, don't harden your hearts like they did in the rebellion. They turned against God and he was not pleased with them in that generation. Even though he saved them out of Egypt, you still have to obey God. You cannot turn back. The scripture says a pig goes back and wallows in the mud. A dog goes back to the vomit. So I, I say this not to condemn, but to encourage you. Don't go back. If you know something is evil, don't go back to it. Do what's good. Do what's noble. We as all neighbors should be doing what is righteous. We should be doing what is good. We have homeless people. We have people that get come in here that don't have any place to go. And everybody's relying on somebody else, just passing the buck to do it. Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, sell your possessions, give to the poor. Then you'll have treasure in heaven. So I encourage you, look not at what you can gain in this life. It's all going to fade away. Look at the kingdom of God. Look at what Jesus did and look at how God judged him. He gave him a name above every other name. He had nothing, no bed to sleep on, nothing. He gave up his blood. He poured himself out unto death. And then the Apostle Paul is another witness of imitate me as I imitate Christ. He did the same thing. He was pursuing righteousness. He was pursuing holiness. And in wisdom, he said, I have not yet obtained the resurrection of the dead. There is a resurrection for all. All will have to stand before God and give an account for what we've done. 
doesn't matter if the if the church that you're giving to or the the charity that you're giving to if they're all doing the good stuff but you're not you're still going to have to stand before god so i encourage you stir up to love stir up to charity stir up to the things that are noble and good and righteous and understand that god's law is perfect if you are believing in a jesus that did not come to establish his father's kingdom the law of god Jesus said, obey the commandments and you will see life. Anybody that loosens even the least of the commandments, they're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven if they even enter it in. It's not easy. He said it's difficult. It is hard. Few find it. So I encourage you, let this stir you up to seek out life. Seek out the everlasting life. It's a free gift. You don't have to do anything for it other than obey God. Just do what he has given you to do. He tells you to be holy. He tells you to love your neighbor as yourself. He tells you to worship him. He's worthy. Look, you, if you have eyes to see, look at everything that he's made. He's made every family under heaven. He's given fathers and mothers and grandparents and uncles and all of these things are built because God is a designer. Look at the building. You can't look at the building and tell me there's not a designer of that. Look at all the nations of the world. But when we reject what the plan is, what the law is, what else is going to happen but trouble and distress? You're going to bring disorder. You're going to bring trouble. All these things come because people don't obey the law. They don't do what is righteous. Amen. And that's why God is, again, Paul said the law is our teacher to bring us to Christ. And it's hard. Some of what Jesus taught is very sharp. It's fierce. It sounds violent. But it's for our own good because he's trying to get us away from the things that we love, which is usually bad. <laughs> People, we love doing bad things. We love selfishness. It's so much easier to love pleasure and ourselves and money and the things that we can get instead of doing the right thing. And that's why God is that commandment of discipleship. He said, you cannot be my disciple unless you renounce your possessions. Then you can. Anybody that loves father or mother or wife or children more than me is not worthy of me. He's not saying that because he wants you to be evil towards your parents. He's saying that so that you recognize love God above everything. Give him the glory. Think rightly. Look at what God has made. He's made everything. He gives us life and breath every morning. His mercies are new every morning. But also acknowledge that he will raise up kingdoms and he will destroy kingdoms. He is a just and mighty God. Every ki Look at Sodom. Look at Egypt. Look at Babylon. Look at Germany when Hitler was reigning. They don't reign long. Evil will not stand. Though it seems to spread itself out and look like it's in great power, it will be overthrown. God is mightier than the earth. Everything in heaven is mightier than that which is on the earth. So I encourage you, fear God. Obey His commandments. If you have not heard the book of Revelation recently, it is a blessing. It's a blessing to those who hear because it's designed to put the fear of God in you to show His judgments are going to come. He's going to pour out His judgments on all that is unrighteous and all that is, un that is wicked so that you turn away from those things. <laughs> So I encourage you, please seek God while he may be found. Call upon his name and put your body into subjection. Paul said in human terms, think about it this way. If you are a slave to unrighteousness, you're going to lead to more unrighteousness. But if you consider yourself a slave to righteousness, it's going to lead to holiness, peace, and true love. That's why the goal of the gospel is to have Christ formed in you, that same mind, that same hope. That same, hey, even if everybody is against me, everybody, they're condemning me to death unjustly on a cross, piercing me with a spear, giving me vinegar to drink when I ask for water. They don't show mercy. They don't show compassion. They're mocking. They're telling me to save myself if I'm truly the son of God. But again, God raised him up. He raised him up and he sent out disciples to go preach to other people, to teach other people to observe the commandments of God. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. If you hear the truth, then I just encourage you, if, if you hear what I'm saying is true, be bold to say amen. Recognize that it's the truth. That's why the God is the God of all. He's not just the God of the Jews. He's the God of all. He's going to test all hearts. All minds are laid bare before him. 
There's not a word on the mouth that's not already before the throne of God. Every word of the tongue, every answer of the tongue. That's why Jesus said, you're going to be condemned by your words or justified by your words. If you acknowledge your guilt, like the person, that the tax collector, he came to the temple of God. He, he wasn't even thinking he was worthy to go in. He just looked at the ground. He said, "I'm forgive me, I'm a sinner. But when you acknowledge those things, it's not to persist in sin. It's to acknowledge what is unrighteous and then follow the rest of what the scripture says. Put it to death. How do you put it to death? With the sword of the Spirit. Renew your mind with God's Word. God's Word is a hammer to build. God's Word is a fire to purify. So when you hear what God is saying, what His commandments are, what His teaching is, it's designed to build up your life so that you and your children last generation to generation. He keeps His covenant. He is not a liar. He keeps His Word. When He says He's going to do something, He does it. He is the helper, but he's not a servant of sin. He gave, his, he gave his son to cleanse us of our iniquities. But when people go back to it, the Bible also says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. If you can acknowledge that God gave his son, that he looked down at the earth, he did not want it. He doesn't take the pleasure in the death of anyone. He didn't want to kill anyone. So he sent his son. Maybe they'll go listen to my son. Maybe they'll obey him. And then Jesus got condemned by that generation. They killed him, and God raised him back up to life, gave them the Holy Spirit so they could go preach to make other disciples, to bring them into the kingdom of God so that people are one, under one God, one Holy One of Israel, the one who sent Moses and gave the law, the one that led the children of Israel out of Egypt, laying plagues onto Egypt, and that brought them into the wilderness to be tested, and then tested Joseph. Joseph also got condemned by his brothers. They tried to kill him. And then God, it says the word of God tested Joseph to see where his heart was. Joseph was trying to be blameless. And that's an example for us to keep ourselves from the things that are tempting us to sin. The devil is going to be the first one right in front of the throne to accuse you before God. He is the accuser of the brethren. The moment some, your own lust tempts you, and it says God doesn't tempt anyone. We're lured away when we're tempted by our own lust. Whether it's pornography, greed, lusting after other people, lusting after power, it's lust. But the glory of God's gospel through Jesus Christ is it frees us from that lust. We're no longer enslaved to our passions. We're no longer enslaved to the things of this life. We've got our mind fixed on the kingdom of God. We recognize He's called us not to just remain in our sin, but to be holy, to be blameless, to be have the right to be children of God. God's not going to let His children just be a bunch of evildoers. He's going to discipline them. He's going to call them to repentance. He's going to teach them. He's going to try to guide them. And if He has to use the rod because people are being stubborn, He'll do so. How do I know this? Because you can look in the Scripture and see He did the same thing with Israel. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What happened to Jerusalem after they killed the Lord Jesus Christ? Did it stay in power? Were they risen up in glory? No. He judged them. They brought a curse upon themselves. They said, let his blood be on us and our children. Therefore, this nation needs to recognize that too. Every nation that does not serve the Holy One of Israel will be uprooted. It will bring destruction. It will bring chaos. It will bring lawlessness. It will bring disorder. But it, again, it, it doesn't just start in the White House. It starts every individual. If every single person turns away from their own sin and does what is right, shows charity, does what is good, noble and true, you're caring for your neighbors. If you remember the story of Cain and Abel, God asked, after Cain killed Abel, God asked him, where is your brother? And Cain's answer was, am I my brother's keeper? Many people act in that same spirit today. Am I my brother's keeper? Oh yeah, I'm watching the guy get high on heroin down at the ocean front. I don't care about him though. I'm watching all of them get, they're going to the lottery machine. They're probably poor themselves, just wasting their money at the lottery, just spending it. All these things.
Be your brother's keeper. That's why it says in all wisdom. We're not the judges. We're not condemning. I don't have stones in my hand to condemn any sinner or put them to death. I'm here to warn, to teach, to push you back onto the path of righteousness, the narrow path of life. To say, love your neighbors. Ask their names. Get to know them. Figure out who they are. Help them out of the things. Because that's what I mean. The devil uses cunning, craftiness. He uses lies. If he can get somebody to just believe a little bit of a lie, he can lead them away. So I encourage you, turn away from unrighteousness. Do what is good. And if you believe in God, be bold enough to glorify him. Sing praise. Make sweet melody in your heart to God, for he loves these things. His ears are not dull. He can hear. He is ready to save. He is the savior of all, especially those who believe. So I encourage you, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe he is who he says he is. He said, I, if, do you condemn me? I'm the son of God. If I call myself the son of God, he was sent from heaven. He wasn't just the baby in the manger. He was sent from heaven. That is what he said. He didn't speak anything other than what he was commanded and sent to do. And he said, the greatest among you will be the slave, the servant of all. Don't be like the Gentiles who lord it over other people. Be the one who's willing, like the Son of Man, to wash the feet even of the person that betrayed him to death, handed him over for 30 pieces of silver. Think about that. How much more have, can, we, can we forgive those who have done wrong to us if the Son of God can forgive all of us of all of our iniquity, all of our unrighteousness, all of the harsh, bitter things that we've said? But that's what I mean. This is a point of decision. He's not, going to not, he's not going to not judge. He has to judge. He has to do righteousness. Which is why he said, I don't judge you, but my word will judge you on the last day. On the last day, we will be held accountable to what he has said, what we have heard, and how much effort we have put in to understand. So I encourage you, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek it out. Struggle for it. Agonize over it. Put to death what's earthly. You can't bring the sports teams into everlasting life. You can't bring your career into everlasting life. You can't bring all the drunkenness into everlasting life. The money is not coming with you. You came into this world naked and bare. You're going to leave naked and bare. But I encourage you, you're gonna, all the things that you do are going to follow you. And God will judge. And that's why I encourage you, fear God. That's not saying that God is evil. He is totally pure. He's totally righteous. He's totally good. Which is why he says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more so will our Father in heaven good gives, give good gifts to those who ask? Ask him for the Holy Spirit. Ask him for the power to overcome unrighteousness, to overcome porn to overcome all the addictions, overcome drugs. Ask him, call out and believe that he's able to do this and he will deliver you, I guarantee it. He is not, he's not waiting for anything other than you to believe, to have a heart to seek him out. He said, if you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. Seek out God, seek out God. He made the heavens, he made the earth, but the ruler of this world stands condemned. He is not judging justly, he is listening more to people, things that are created, worshiping created things more so than God. That's the same thing that happened when Jesus got condemned. It's an example in the scripture so that we see and can be taught. Why did Pontius Pilate hand Jesus over to be crucified? He was listening to the people instead of righteousness. He said, I find no guilt in this man and he still condemned him to death. That's unrighteous, that's not good. That's not a fair judgment. Is that how you want to be judged? Because that's how the devil is going to judge this world. He's going to condemn everybody. He's going to try to, he just wants to wage death on you. But it says in the Bible, Jesus Christ brought immortality to life through the gospel. What is immortality? It's being free from sin. The wages of sin is death. If you sin, you will die which is why God calls people to repent, to turn away from sin, stop sinning. Paul said, if you're in the church, Paul says to the church in 1 Corinthians 15, 34, 
He says, awake to righteousness and stop sinning. Some of you have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. So I encourage you, draw near to God. Cleanse your hands. Wash your hands from the bitterness, the cursing, the slander, all the gossip, all the, the pornography, all the lusts, all the vanity, all the things that are going to fade away and seek the things that are up above. Nobility, righteousness, courage, boldness, the things that are good. And, and here's the hardest one, obedience. Put yourself into subjection to God. Humble yourself under God, under His mighty hand. He will exalt you in due time. But He's going to resist the proud. And I just, I'll end it with this. He told a parable about a rich man and a poor man that was covered in sores, just waiting at the gate, just begging for bread, begging for crumbs to fall off the table. And the rich man ate lavishly every day. And I'm sure he was probably going to synagogue all the time. He, pro he had, probably had a big family, had everything seemingly in order. Everything looked great from the outside. But then he's walking past this poor man, Lazarus, every day and not showing compassion, not being his brother's keeper, not being somebody that shows love. And so Jesus said when they died, Lazarus got brought to Abraham's bosom. He got brought to comfort. He received bad things in his life. And then he was comforted in, ever, in the everlasting life. But the rich man, he went to torment. And in torment, he looked up to Lazarus and he's trying to say, can you send him back to warn my brothers, warn my family, so they don't end up here, so they don't end up in the place where there's no rest, where the fire's not quenched and the worm does not die. And Abraham said, if they don't listen to somebody raised back from the dead, they're not going to listen. <laughs> if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they're not going to listen to somebody raised from the dead. You know what that says? If your heart is stubborn, if you've already made up your mind that God can't possibly be trying to talk to me, he's not trying to warn me, he's not trying to guide me away from the evil things that I know I shouldn't be doing. He is. But listen to Moses. The law is good. The law is holy. The law is spiritual. You can't have righteousness through the law. It's designed to condemn you. It's designed to bring you to that point where you can obey Jesus, to crucify yourself with Him and obey His teaching, obey His righteousness. So anybody that has ears to hear, may God bless you, give you grace, fill you with praise, fill you with glory, to hope for the everlasting kingdom that will come. Remember, there's a cloud of witnesses. If you have been reading the scripture, if you heard anything, remember Elijah. Remember, there were so many more false prophets than there were true prophets. And the people who love sin hate true prophets. Ahab hated Micaiah. Ahab hated Elijah. It's like, you enemy of Israel. No, it's not. <laughs> Elijah was not an enemy of Israel. If the people are all in rebellion, yeah, then the voice of conviction sounds like hate. But that's why God's calling you back. Turn back. He wants to rain righteousness down upon you. He wants to fill you up. So that your generations, life, life, life. He came not to condemn, but to give you life. What is life? It's following God's law. Everything that God is, is spirit. It's truth. It's good. It's noble. That's why we have to renew our minds to what is good. Because the voices in this world, they will fill you with so much anxiety, so much fear, so much stress. All these things that are evil.